from 1977 through 1993, Max Superliner, a Class 8 heavy-duty truck, was top of the lineup for Mack trucks. The Superliner series of Mack trucks were very popular in America and in Australia. Hi, I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skeel, and this is another episode of Toy Talk. I've got a great little model to review later on in the video, so stay tuned. Also, the model I'm reviewing is for sale on my website while supplies last. The link will be in the description down below. Just for my customers, it includes a special bonus. Subscribe and get yours before they sell out. The Mack Superliner was introduced by Mack Trucks in 1977 to replace the Mack RW model, R for R series and W for Western. The Superliner production lasted for 15 years until it was discontinued in 1993. The model line was a conventional cab tractor configured primarily for highway and vocational applications, serving as the flagship conventional of the Mack product line in North America. Following its 1993 discontinuation, the Superliner was replaced by the CL700. Today, the Superliner's closest equivalent is the Mack Anthem. Do any of you know the background of the Superliner and how it came to be? The development of the Superliner began life in the early 1970s under Brockway Motor Company, a subsidiary of Mack Trucks. While using the cab of the Mack R Series in its production, Brockway competed nearly directly against Mack in the heavy-duty truck sales. Following the introduction of the Long Hood Western Mack RS700, Brockway commenced development of the Superliner featuring a squared off hood designed to accommodate a larger radiator to keep bigger diesel engines cool. In 1977, Brockway Motor Company was closed down by Mack Trucks following labor disputes that ended its production. While much of Brockway was liquidated, Mack continued further development on a set forward axle superliner entering production by the end of 1977. As the design already used a Mack RS cab, the Superliner saw only minor detail changes before entering production, internally designated as the RW700. The Superliner ended its American production in 1993. However, the Superliner was so popular in Australia that Mack Trucks Australia still manufactures the Superliner as a lighter duty version of the Mack Titan. The Australian Superliner is similar to the American Superliner with some exceptions. The Australian version has a raised cap. A taller hood allows for larger radiators to cool the engine more quickly in the hot Australian climates. Heavy-duty double and triple frame rails handle the high loads and stress of driving on the unpaved dirt roads. Rear axles offered include tri-drive options and planetary hub reduction axles from Renault trucks. Air brake system has a high-flow air compressor and large air tanks to provide air for two or more trailers and the air starter if it's fitted with one to start the engine. Integrated vertical air intake snorkels keep dust and dirt out of the filters prolonging their life. High power engines from Cummins, ISX and Signature and Caterpillar C16 provide the necessary power up until 2000-2001 the Mac 16.4 liter E9 V8 was offered at 610 horsepower and 2050 
foot-pounds of torque. The Mack 18-speed transmission is standard on the Australian Superliner with an Eaton 18-speed option. Eaton 2 and 4-speed auxiliary transmissions are also available to provide extra gears and an optional power tower. In 1988, Mack Trucks Australia made 16 special edition Superliner 2 Bicentennials. The special limited edition models were named after people influential to Australian history, including James Cook, Captain Blythe, and Ludwig Leichhardt, just to name a few. One remaining example is operated by Eagle Towing Service of Ringwood, Victoria, and has since been converted to a heavy towing salvage truck. The American Mack Superliner has also been a Hollywood movie star, with several credits to its name, including a little-known movie that I only recently found titled Flatbed Annie, starring Annie Potts as a lady truck driver and a Mack Superliner. Now for a few oddities in the movies for the Mack Superliners. In the Disney Pixar Cars movie series, the character Mac was inspired by a 1985 Mac Superliner. Mac hauled Lightning McQueen to all his races and was even a temporary member of Lightning McQueen's pit crew. In the 1978 film Convoy, a Mac RS700 is driven by main character Martin Rubber Duck Pinwald, played famously by Chris Christopherson. As the film was released after the replacement of the RS-700 by the Superliner, Mack inserted the Superliner in as much promotional materials and products related to the film during its original promotional run. This was to help promote their new Superliner series and to salvage promotions of trucks as much as possible since they had discontinued the RS-700. And this is the DCP by First Gear, 164 scale die cast metal replica of a Mack Superliner with a Talbert Lowboy. There is the item number. It is 60 1045. And this is the First Gear Talbert three axle detached Lowboy. I've already talked about the die cast promotions Fontaine detached Lowboy in my video on Hammett Excavating, and there's a link to go see it so you can see the difference between these two low boys. And there is quite a bit of difference. This one has the DOT striping along the neck and along the deck, also on the pieces over the wheels. It rides on two hole chrome wheels and a lower profile tire. The center caps of the wheels are painted in black and the tires are soft rubber. Up on the neck, it has the Talbert Lowboy logo, and you can see the DOT striping. There's also two flip-down ramps on this one so that you can load the uh, equipment to it. Up on top, there's not a ton of detail really to talk about, but here it is. There's diamond plate here, diamond plate there. There's wood decking. Well, it's not real wood. It's simulated wood in plastic. And then you can see the frame uh, structure there. And also you can see the top of the axles and the wheels and tires there. Going underneath, you can see it has the suspension, all the air lines on the rear axles, and brake canisters. It's a really nice low boy. And you can see the bottom of the deck has the uh, structure into it. Up on the neck, you can see it has a kingpin and then all of your hookups for your electric lines and your airlines right on the front of it. Around to the back, and you can see two brake lights on each side and then an amber turn signal, three DOT uh, required lights in the center, and then these actually are a soft rubber 
or soft plastic, soft rubber uh, mud flap. So they're actually real flaps, like real ones. They're, they're much more prototypical than what we're used to with the hard plastic. Then you can see the airbags on the rear axles. Overall, they did a nice job. The one thing this one doesn't have is working outriggers. Well, in my opinion, I can go for the lack of working outriggers because they don't flop in the breeze like the DCPs. The DCP, basically, you have to put the uh, boards on them to hold the outriggers in place. Otherwise, it just looks crazy. But this one doesn't have that problem. But at the same time, you couldn't put the outriggers on this one, so you can't have the board. So it's a toss-up. They did also make the uh, neck detach on this thing. There's a little clip here and then two holes right there and then there's two pegs on the frame and then the two holes there. Real easy to put on and take off. And then you can see how those uh, ramps just fold down. The DCP Fontaine does not have the ramps but this one does. And then it's easy to put back on. You just line those two holes up with the pegs on the frame and then flip until it goes click in place. Be careful, it can get broken, but overall, it's a good design. Now let's talk about the Mac Superliner. And there it is, the 64 scale Mac Superliner in all its glory. It rides on 10 hole chrome wheels, front rear, soft rubber tires, it has chrome half fenders here on the back, chrome fuel tanks, chrome straight pipes that are curved out, chrome mirror, chrome breathers, the air cleaner air intakes, chrome mirrors, chrome grill, chrome bumper, uh, chrome battery box. There's a black hard plastic mud flap hanging off the front fender and an air tank. Door handle with key lock underneath it and a grab bar which is actually a, a piece of wire molded around door into the sleeper, toolbox door, and then this one's got four little uh, amber lights on the side of the sleeper. Really nice. Another thing, there is a step right here so you can get up onto the deck plate and hook up your airlines that are hanging off of a pogo stick. Kind of hard to see it because it's black and there is black, but it's a little different than most of them have ladders. This one just has a single step hanging off a post pretty cool that they did it different. Round to the front, a uh, big Mac grill. This is a later iteration because it has the square headlights in there instead of the round. The first ones had dual rounds and this one has dual squares on each side so this is a later model. It's not the first, first year. Big drop bumper here that's chrome plated. Mac is in the top of the grill and they tampoed over it in black and there's a little bulldog up on the hood. They did a much better job, in my opinion, on this bulldog than they did on the R model bulldog, but that's okay. Side of the hood, get your Superliner badge there, and it says Mac. Also, they've got box style turn signals on there. It's got hard plastic windows up here, windshield wipers, and the center bar is molded into the window and then tampoed in black. Inside, two black high back seats, black dashboard, and black steering wheel. All black interior. Over onto this side, same exact details as on the driver's side. Really, really sharp. Round to the back, you've got your Mac branded mud flaps with the Mac trucks logo on them. They're just black with a white logo. Two brake lights, and then this time they tampoed in the little backup lights. Fifth wheel is chrome on this one, which is kind of cool. It's quite different. It also pivots a little. Diamond plate deck plate. There's two brake lights on the back of the sleeper, your airlines, and your pogo stick. Underneath, Mac style big heavy differentials with the axle with the drive shaft going into the top and then geared down into it. Nice rendition of, kind of looks like torsion bar suspension for the rear axles. 
bottom of the engine detail, bottom of the transmission detail, drive shafts really sharp. Bottom of the step, front and rear wheels, they all have the same tread on them. Positional front steering, not true steering, positional. There's an air tank on each side and nice frame rails. Up on top, you can see it has the roof clearance lights. They are molded into the cab, painted silver and then tampoed in orange. And then it has two chrome air horns. The hood does open, but the doors don't. And under the hood, you can see a detailed either E7 or E6, depending on what year model they actually uh, replicated. It's got either a Mac E7 or E6 series inline six cylinder diesel with turbocharger. Then you have all your radiator and your charge air system, intercooler, everything, and nice piping detail. And then you can see right there, really nice job that they did with this. Now let's go on and hook it up. And there it is, that's the way it comes in a box. But I want you to see what they look like with something sitting on them because a low boy really needs a load. And that is the DCP by first gear, Mac Superliner in red with 60 inch sleeper, pulling a Talbert front detach low boy, three axle low boy with an Ertl International 640 excavator sitting on the deck. That is a really sharp piece. I hope you enjoyed the history of the famous Mack Superliner. Also, I hope you enjoyed the review of the DCP by First Gear Mack Superliner. Let me know what you think of the model and the style of the video in the comments. Do you enjoy the history part, the product review part, or both parts? Give me your honest feedback for future videos. As I said previously, I have a few of these beautiful red Mac Superliners available for sale on my website. The link will disappear when they are all sold out, so don't wait too long to get one for your collection. Also remember, there's a special bonus only available to my Toy Talk fans to go along with your purchase of the Mac Superliner model. If the link to purchase one is gone, I've still got you covered with something special. It's a checklist of all the first gear fallen flags and best of all, the checklist is totally free. Grab it with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone. Please smash that like button, share this video and subscribe to my channel for more great diecast product reviews and histories on the real machines. I'm Logan, the 64th Gear Jammer Skill, and I'll be back soon with another episode of Toy Talk.